what's up? It's Big Jack Films here. Happy New Year! It's 2024 and welcome back to the Inuyasha Vlogs. It's been a while since we wrapped up the sixth season, but we are actually on uh, Season 7, which is actually technically the final season of the original run of the show. So, I know Final Act is going to come up, that's going to come up, we have a fourth movie, we have Yashihime, but in terms of the original Inuyasha series, uh, that ran from 2000 to 2004. Ironically, we're on the 20th anniversary of the final season. Uh, this is it. This is this is going to conclude the original run of the show, and um, we're going to see how it holds up today. So, a couple things before we get started. Unlike most Inuyasha vlogs for this one in particular, it's just going to be a straightforward vlog. There's not going to be any cuts in between or anything, and that's because um, I'm filming this literally New Year's Eve, so the day before it goes out, so I have to kind of rush this out. But on top of that, I have come down with a serious cold. Um, second time I've gotten sick this year, um, and unfortunately my girlfriend's also got the same thing, but she got me this wonderful Inuyasha cup that I really like. It's going to be part of the show, so I can drink her. I got ginger ale going, so... Oh, it's good shit. But to the point, we are on the final season of the show, the final stretch of the original run, and... Today we're going to talk about a two-part arc uh, to get started on Season 7, which I'm calling the Birds and Brothers arc. Now, on the individual volume DVDs, this doesn't really have a DVD that fits a title, so I'm just calling it the Birds and the Brother arc, because what it entails this two-parter is actually quite solid to start off our show, and it kicks off right with the plot. So, where we last left off the series, we had a new villain named Princess Abe, who um, has a mother in this cave with this weird eye thing who sounds like you Baba from Spirited Away. And in doing so, we had just saved Kikyo. Kagome had just saved Kikyo uh, from the Miasma. She's been fully healed. That was sort of our season finale. So we're kind of picking up where we right where we left off, where Princess Abe is seeing a lot of these characters as a huge nuisance, including her kind of eerie... Uh, union with Naraku, which she's not a fan of. So the mom says, Hey, uh, Abe, daughter, there's a uh, village castle that none of Naraku's demons are touching. You might want to go check that out, because I think there's some sort of connection with Naraku. So if you go, like, take out that village, you might actually tussle a few feathers with him, per se. So Princess Abe's like, Alright, I'll go do that. In doing so, she also kind of comes across Kagura at one point. Kagura is very prevalent in this episode where her and uh, she's basically there along with Kohaku and everything uh, trying to figure out what's going on. And while doing such, Kohaku is in this village, uh, in this castle, taking care of the lady who had just given birth to, oddly enough, the the uh, the infant of Naraku, although nobody knows that, and basically having to protect them unconsciously unknowing that he, is, uh, he was put there by Naraku specifically to protect the infant. So Princess Abe attacks the castle with her weird white pterodactyl things. Like, those aren't birds, those are pterodactyls. In fact, dinosaurs on the show would be kind of cool. And so Inuyasha and the gang see this attack, and they obviously go to try to protect the castle. Then coming across Princess Abe, who fights them and says, and they're accusing her of aligning with Naraku, and Abe's like, I don't give a shit about that guy. So you think these two that have now a common foe would work together. And I think that was sort of Naraku's plan, where he wants these two to take each other out while he has Kohaku take care of the infant. But because Princess Abe attacked, um, that leaves him vulnerable because his human heart is in the infant. So Kohaku has to protect the infant, and not just from the demon birds, but from the people. <clears throat> so, in doing so, part one ends with Kohaku being possessed by... Um, the Naraku to say, kill all the people, slaughter all the villagers. In doing so, the villagers actually befriended Naraku, or befriended Kohaku, and um, got to know him. They said he was very impressive with his uh, fighting skills, and uh, all that, and showing signs of a demon slayer, which clicks into Kohaku's memories, and he gets his memory backs instinctively. And throughout this two-parter, realizes he gets his memory back, he knows who he is, and now we'll, we'll go into the cycle there. So when doing so, he actually does slaughter a lot of the people who complimented him, leaving the princess and the infant alive. But the princess also dies because Kana comes in and takes the infant and they take off with Kagura. 
Kagura picks up Kohaku after Sango sees that Kohaku has slaughtered more people. Like, I swear, this kid's gonna have PTSD from the body count this kid has. Like, this kid's probably getting up to, like, 50, 60 people at this point that he killed personally. Maybe more. Maybe 100 people. This poor kid. But, um, Sango does see that he slaughtered a bunch of people, and, and at the same time, Kohaku gets his memory, his memory back, and Kagura picks him up, and they go back to Naraku, but in doing so, Kohaku realizes who he is, what he's done, the guilt he feels. He almost tries to kill himself by jumping off the feather that Kagura's on, which my girlfriend and I were watching this, and she was laughing hysterically at the feather, which is amazing. But, um, essentially, Kohaku uh, realizes who he is, and then he makes his vow that, okay, I'm gonna play the long game, and I will kill Naraku myself, because he finally realizes who he is, and he's gonna get revenge for his family. Um, at the same time, Sago is once again going through some trauma and emotional baggage because of Kohaku and seeing him again and after killing people, then seeing the villagers he actually saved compliment him, uh, kind of brought her emotions back, so she has a lot of emotions in this episode, two-parter. Moroku comforts her, and we kind of just end in a way that just sets up that Kohaku has got his memory back and he's about ready to go on his own revenge spree on Naraku. So, what are my thoughts on this two-parter? Um, as a good start to the final season, this is great. This is actually one of those instances where normally it's sort of the same old, same old, but in this case, because it adds character development, it adds more uh, to what's going on to in ending the series, uh, this is great. This is a good chance for Kohaku to really shine as a character, gain his memory back, not be a mindless slave, not be a mindless puppet, and actually have some goals to reach, which... We'll have to see for a while if he reaches those goals. Uh, there, it's, the one thing I will say is that, I mean, like, the main cast is kind of on the sidelines fighting Princess Abe. They don't contribute much to the plot. This is very much a Gohaku-centric story, and, along with Princess Abe. But, again, she doesn't even isn't even relevant. It's just more just to get the villain rolling. But I will say one of the biggest compliments about this uh, two-porter... The animation is phenomenal. Like, this is one of... If this is where a lot of the budget went uh, to this final season, I think they have a good budget going forward on this uh, because the animation is breathtaking. It's fantastic. The um, I watched it, actually, not on... I have the DVD just in case, uh, but I mostly have been kind of lazy in watching this on Netflix and HD, and it looks beautiful. Like, the matte paintings, the star lines look great. The backgrounds look great. The, um... There's one mid sense where we see flashbacks from the early seasons, like seasons one and two, and we see the mix of hand-drawn, which was how they used it, and now the digital hand-drawn, but you can tell the show was still hand-drawn to a degree with paintings. They just went to digital to make it easier, except the color brightness, which I brought up prior. But, as a Kohaku-centric story, it really helps pick up the pace of the plot. So, I really give it credit for that. Um, the acting is stellar by all the English voice cast. Again, I am watching the English dub by uh, Viz Entertainment. I'm not watching the Japanese version. And overall, like, this is a good start to where we're going to go from here. Because I think the next, uh, the next big storyline's coming up that's sort of supposed to be about the final jewel shard, I think. So, I really like this one. I think it's a solid good start to the show, to the final season. And I'm gonna give this one a good good 8 out of 10. This was a good start. I really am very impressed. My only complaint I have with it, part of me feels like part 2 kind of drags a little bit at the end, like around, like, I'd say uh, 2, like at least the uh, 2 thirds of it drags. So, in a way, this may have not been appropriate to be a two-part episode. This more of likely should have been a 45 minute, 50 minute special and not uh, a tw like a, a two-part episode. I think it would have benefited more from that than being a, a two-parter, because there are times, I will admit, it does drag, which is why I bring it to an eight. It's not a perfect episode, but it's a good it's a good catch-up to the series and a good start-up uh, going forward on this final season. So, yeah, eight out of ten. This one's a good start to check out. I would recommend it. So let me know your thoughts on the birds and brother in the uh, arc in the comments below. Support our Patreon. Just a more. We'll get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. Uh, going forward, obviously, we're going to keep trying to get these out every week and try to finish off this series because once we finish season seven, we go into film four as a review. So I got to get on that as soon as possible. 
But to the point, this is a good episode to start. I can't wait to finish off the original run of the series. Uh, this is going to be really fun going forward. So until the next video, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off saying I'll see you in the next arc. And um, Happy New Year 2024. And here's to finishing up the original run. So until next time, see you guys later. Take it easy.